Okay. Uh, really, really excited about this one. The, the soundest teacher in the Dublin Academy of Education in today to talk to us about uh, geography. So Tracy, thanks so much for coming in. No problem at all. Uh, thanks so much for uh, imparting your knowledge on uh, something that I know that students over the last number of week, uh, last number of weeks in the school, I've just noticed have been uh, students come in having a, having a little bit of problems with uh, some sort of field study or something. But you're going to tell us hopefully in this podcast everything we need to know about geography and condense you know the two years of study down into you know forty minutes here. <laughs> And everything is going to be absolutely nailed. But um, yeah, you excited to be on the podcast? I am. I am. Yeah, first for, time on a on a podcast. So yeah, yeah. For both people that are that are <laughs> listening to this, that's a that's a you know, you know it's it's all, it's all great. So uh, geography in general, I actually didn't really know until last year that there was it wasn't a hundred percent exam. Yeah. Um, would you be able to tell me a little bit about like how how so when I get my grade in in August, how, how is that broken down? So your grade is broken up into two parts. It is 80% of your written exam, which you'll sit in June of 2020. And then the other 20% is the field study investigation that you do prior to kind of the end of April, okay? So that's done. Now your paper I suppose to start off with, your paper is made up of a couple of sections, really two. So section one is your short questions. That's 80 marks, 20% of your paper for 10 out of 12 short questions. The second section is actually your structured and your essay section. So there you need to do four of them, okay? And that's, I suppose, where on the paper you get a little bit of options. Um, I suppose the options there, what you have to do really is the first one, your core one, your physical geography, 80 marks, 20% of the written paper. Your regional geography, again, 80 marks, 20%. You pick an elective, an elective either between economic or human environmental. Um, so you will study one of them, again, 80 marks, 20%. And then the final part is your option. Generally, most people will study geoecology. It tends to be the most popular. And that's 20% for one essay question. That's the only place on the exam, really, the structure changes a little bit. Perfect. Uh, so, sorry, I, I actually write like a sloth. <laughs> so, so, so in this paper, so the paper you, you said yep. it's eighty percent of your grade. So yeah. we'll, we'll, I think we'll talk a little bit about the field study uh, in a few minutes' time. Yeah, but but of the, of this paper, so you said there were, there were short questions. How, how much were they worth again? The short questions are eighty marks, so that's twenty percent of your paper. Oh yeah, yeah sorry, um, at maths, I get it. I, I get it. <laughs> I think I'm out. Yeah. Brilliant. So about sixteen percent of your of your final grade. <laughs> yeah, you know, but of the paper, that's when we, that's going to be fine. I, yeah. I just because you said twenty, 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 and I was like, how did I not get that? Is it? <laughs> Anyway, it, you know, I usually have the marking schemes and stuff. So tell me, so short questions, uh, and how many, how many short questions so are there? So on the exam, there's 12 short questions, and you answer 10 of them. So now you can do your 12, and your examiner will take the best 10 yeah. from them. They're worth eight marks each. Um, they're actually a lovely, I suppose they're a lovely section of the paper. They only examine three things. They examine your physical geography, regional geography, and then your skills section. And if I'm being completely honest, the probably the poorest of them three, which is answered, is the skills section because people don't tend to spend a lot of time on them. Um, your ordnance survey maps, your aerial photographs, your weather maps, they tend to be the, poor, the poorly answered part of the short questions. Okay, why, why it just people just they haven't practiced them? I suppose, I think it's the fact that they're such a small, small kind of a unit of work within kind of a textbook or within notes that people don't concentrate on them. Um, they generally would only spend maybe two, three classes on Oregon survey maps, mm -hmm. maybe one class in aerial photographs. I know a lot of students won't even look at their weather section um, at all and kind of, they kind of nearly think it's part of their physical geography course, but mm -hmm. it's not. Um, so it's really, really important the last number of years I suppose it has been noted that that was probably one of the sections that students aren't answering very, very well. Okay, so it's great that now you can have a look at that. And yeah. Uh, fantastic. So, the, the, so the short questions, 12 of them, answer 10. Yeah. Uh, is, is this an ignorant, is this, this could be an ignorant question, so feel free to say if it is. Geography in general, because you're saying physical, regional skill, is, is like, you know, in biology it's broken down into three units. Yeah. Is, there, is, there, is there an overall breakdown of what the actual whole course is? So. 
the see you get a good bit of option now i don't know okay. about biology you get a good bit of an option so you don't have the option with physical regional skills okay you so have to do them yeah and then you get to choose between one of two electives okay which is your human environmental which is what i personally do and i think it's probably the easier of the two sections yeah and then you have an economic section yeah um so you choose yeah. one of the two of them okay and then you have your option which is the final question on the paper and there you have four options. Generally, most people will go for the GU Ecology. Um, Culture and identity seems to be in second place. And the other two, I've, you rarely see them answered. Okay, perfect. So no, that's, that's just for me. So yeah. I have to make sure I can a answer or ask uh, questions here. So you got the short questions. Yeah. Fantastic. And then I, 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 so you went through the four S's. So every yeah. single year, do I know, do I, do I know if I was sitting the exam now in, in a, a number, well, a number of weeks, say, for my mocks or for yeah. the Lindsay, do I know for a fact then that this, like, I don't maybe I don't know the wording, but I know question one is blah of the essays, question two is blah. Yeah, so I suppose your core one, your physical geography, hmm. so physical is always question one, two, and three of the paper. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And what you do is you choose one of them questions. So you might choose, say, question two, and if you choose question two, you do the part A, B and C of that question, so it's split yeah. up into three parts. Okay, okay, so sorry, so it, maybe it's best off. So in the essay part, yeah. you have to do four, um, but there's there's three of each, is there? Is so there's three, there's an A, B, and C. Yeah, sorry. To your physical, yeah. your regional, and then whichever elective you choose. Okay, okay. The option is one entire essay, just one. Okay, okay, yeah, I get you, I get you now. And it, well, who are you laughing at me or are you laughing at my writing or are you no, laughing at Dylan? A bit, a bit, a bit of both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice hoodie though. Okay, uh, so, so, okay, so fantastic. So we, if we, if you, you, you were actually saying it quite eloquently before I've ruined this here, could you explain the, the essay part again? So when, we, when I go into it, I've, do, I've just yeah. done my short question or what, maybe you do them last or whatever, but I'm going into the essay idea. What, what, what am I exactly looking at here? So. so once you go in, um, I'm going to do it in the order of the paper, which yeah. I wouldn't advise, but so you go in, you'll look at your physical geography. So you'll read yeah. through question one, two and three. So yeah. you choose one of them. So you may choose question number two, as I said. Yeah. And there's three parts to that. Perfect. There's a part A, B and C. Yep. Now the part A is worth 20 marks. 20 marks. Your part B and C, which are two essay style questions, are worth 30 marks each. Perfect. Now, I suppose moving on from that, you go into your regional, your regional is four, five, and six. Yep. And the same structure applies. So let's say you pick question number four. Question number four will have a part A, B, and C. Part A, 20, 30, and 30. Okay. Um, after that, you choose whether if you're doing economic, that's seven, eight, nine. Mm -hmm. If you're doing human, which we do, it's 10, 11, and 12. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And the same idea applies there. Uh, same idea, A, B, C. Yep. The only one that is different is when you get down to your option, your GU Ecology. Mm -hmm. There's three questions, so questions 16, 17, 18. Mm -hmm. Okay, so three questions. You choose one of them, and that's one essay style question worth 80 marks for that one essay. Yeah, okay. Complicated structure. Yeah, got it. <laughs> But that being said, it, like it, it complicates structure, but it seems to give you a serious amount of choice. Yeah, it does give you a serious amount of choice on the paper. There's a serious amount of cutting out. And one thing that you'll always notice in mocks is students that go in not knowing the structure of the exam paper mm. will always tend to take an awful lot of time reading questions that they haven't studied mm -hmm. and that they won't study before their exam. Yeah. Um, maybe doing the e having a look at the economic section and they don't do economic in school, they do, yeah. for example, the human environmental. Um, so it is, you have to know that structure when you go in. Yeah. Yeah, so you're not, wait, yeah, you're wasting not your wasted. valuable time. Yeah. Uh, it time, so I suppose we, we could have, have a look at it. Uh, timing's probably a bit yeah. of an issue, because I'm counting if you're, if you're doing the, the three essays, four essays, sorry, two essay style questions in yeah. each question. So lots of essays. Yeah, loads of essays. Uh, yeah, right, so yeah. 
In total, you have two, four, six, you have seven essay questions. Oh, handy enough. So you've, <laughs> how, you have about a week or something to do the exam, uh, do you? No, two hours and 50 minutes, unfortunately. Okay, okay. Well, this is this easy subject is getting harder and harder and harder. <laughs> All I remember is volcanoes from junior surf. But anyway, it's pretty hard. So tell me, how, the, how does this work out then, so in terms of timing? So in terms of timing, what I would always say, to, so to start off, I suppose, again, I'll go in order of the paper, um, your short questions. Now, I would say to students, 20 minutes maximum with your, their short questions. If you're, a H, like if you're aiming for H1 or H2 or H3, you need to be able to fly through them short questions quite quickly, mm -hmm. okay? So approximately 20 minutes for them, if not less. Yeah. Now, when you go on, I suppose, for your physical, your regional and your elective, whether it's economic or human, mm -hmm. each of them have a part A, B and C. Mm -hmm. okay so for them three sections they have a part a b and c um so part a is worth 20 marks so give it five minutes yep part b is worth 30 marks so give it 15 minutes and part c again 30 marks 15 minutes okay so in total that's 80 marks per question 20% mm -hmm. of your paper and 35 minutes yep. so for example your physical geography we said we're doing question two, you'll spend 35 minutes only on question two in total. Yep. And you have to keep that quite tight, okay? Yep. Um, you shouldn't be going over the 35 minutes. And that's why I, I always say five minutes with the part A. It gives you a little bit of extra time in your essay style questions, because the part A is a couple of short questions, maybe reading from an extract, or it could be looking at a bar chart or a diagram and answering a couple of questions on that. Mm -hmm. So generally 5, 15, 15 is always my rule. Fantastic. It, actually something ca uh, Gavin said in English the last day is a lot of students don't stick to timing in English, yeah. in essay style. And he said what happened was you're always going to get more marks on the start of the question and you will be finishing for the last like five minutes of it yeah. on top of it. So it kind of seems that that will be potentially similar here. And I suppose, yeah, it definitely is. And one thing I will say, if you know how to read the question the essay question style question well and you can pick out the keywords generally very quickly with only a couple of phrases and examples wrote down maybe literally like maybe 10 words you'll be able to get eight out of them 30 marks if not 10 out of them 30 marks very very quickly mm -hmm. um i suppose in comparison to the kind of longer sentences and stuff like that so if you know how to read the question well you'll be able to get a lot of the marks quite quickly Mm -hmm. um, the last section of the paper, so that's for them three second sections, yep. as I said, physical, regional, and, and your the option. Yep. Um, your option, yep. no matter which one it is, and it's worth 80 marks in total for that essay. So yep. that's worth the same as your whole physical, physical question, 35 minutes as well. Okay. Um, now that would be a question I would say for students to start their paper with. Okay. Um, I suppose, why do I say that? It's generally the one they have prepped the best. Yeah. And it's quite, as you can imagine, 35 minutes non-stop writing is, is going to get you quite a few pages. Yeah. Um, it tends to be long. And I know people say, you know, how long should my essay be? It's not about the length of your essay. It's about what you need in it. It's 80 marks, 80 marks in that, 60 marks there. Mm. Go for your information okay mm -hmm. so your srps pretty much and then 20 marks goals for your overall co coherence okay okay we, now you're gonna have to explain both of those to me uh, srp and coherence so your srps are your significant relevant points so they're pieces of information now generally what i would say and i suppose i like to keep it very simple for students because i think you can overcomplicate what an srp is mm -hmm. i generally will say to them it's two pieces of pieces of factual information. So, mm -hmm. for example, limestone is a permeable rock, full stop. Permeable means water can pass through it, full stop. That's two pieces there, that limestone is permeable and the definition of permeable. Now, I, I always say to students, don't get too caught up in learning exactly what an SRP is. If you take the simple rule of two pieces of factual information, you should definitely get your SRP out of it, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so you need, basically, if there's 60 marks allocated to that, mm -hmm. okay, Every SRP is worth two marks, okay. and that's everywhere in the paper. So that'd be 30 SRP. 30 SRP. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. 
Unbelievable. Fantastic. That's everywhere in the paper. That's so the market the divide by two. Per perfect. And coherence. I, now, let me get to this because Gavin was sagging my vocabulary <laughs> the last day on this. Coherence, I, I assume, is that your essay, when read alone, makes sense yeah. from start to finish. Is that correct? Exactly. Yeah. So that it makes sense that I think the biggest problem in geography and, you know, students have to do it because of the, the timing and the exam. They learn off. But when they learn off pieces of information or essays, here in particular, they have to make sure it answers the question asked. Mm -hmm. So one example of that, if you were doing biomes and you were looking at the characteristics of biomes, which a lot of students do, you know, students might write out them characteristics for when they ask how soil, flora and fauna is affected by climate. So you have, even though the information might be the same in them two essays, you have to make sure you are answering the question asked. So having your subheadings correct, make sure you're referencing the fact that the flora is impacted or fauna is impacted or, or soil, apologies, is impacted by climate mm -hmm. throughout your essay. So you just need to highlight that. Um, that's probably where people fall down the most yeah. um, is actually answer. They give the information, but they're not answering the question. Mm. Similar actually happens in biology, but it wouldn't be yeah. as detrimental because in bi biology that, you know, someone sees the word photosynthesis and just throws down every stuff they know yeah. about it. Whereas the question could be slightly phrased a different way. Yeah. Uh, you kind of touched on something there. So that's the timing. We've got yeah. the timing of the exam there. You suggest that we do this physical, uh, the, sorry, sorry, we do this uh, last part, the option first. Yeah. Because, and, and we're doing physical in this school. Um, for your option, yeah. geoecology. Sorry, geoecology. Sorry. All right, dope. Oh. So we're doing ge geoecology. So that's the one we do first. Then after that, what would you suggest af after that? What would be the second? I would always say to students, get into their short questions after okay. that. Cool. Get into your short questions. It kind of gives students, because you're writing for 35 minutes, their hands are like, you can see them, you know, they're the going like, are you know, yeah, they're just shaking their hands after that essay. Mm -hmm. Give yourself it like the 20 minutes or maybe you might be able to do it in 15. Do the mm -hmm. short questions. They're tick the box circle the answer sometimes you have to write down a sentence or so but they just give students a little bit of a break yeah. um, from actually writing essays yeah after that I suppose whether you want to do your physical regional or economic slash human environmental mm -hmm. I would say to students do like do the section they like first yeah get the one you are best at done first yeah. just in case you come to you know, you look up at the clock and you see you only have five minutes and you haven't answered. Maybe your human environmental is your best. You haven't answered the question that you prefer. For, so answer yeah. the one you like best yeah. first. And I suppose it gives you a little bit of confidence in the exam. Yeah. Um, when you do answer the questions, make sure, for example, if you pick your physical, make sure you read through question one, two and three very, very carefully. Mm -hmm. And think about which question suits you best. Um, yeah. So you're not just picking it based on the A part no. and then realising B and C no. is gone the yeah, wrong way. Yeah, because I, I actually heard of a student before who said to me they answered all their part A's. So from their physical, their regional, and at, they were actually doing economic. They answered all of them first mm -hmm. in a mock. And then they realised, they went to do their essay questions after, and they realised they hadn't read any of the essay questions. Okay, yeah, yeah. So they had even though they had picked their favourite part A mm -hmm. and answered it, and answered it for all three sections, they didn't pick it for the part like, B and C, yeah, yeah, C yeah. which, you know, was 60 marks yeah, yeah. of that question. Yeah. Um, so it's very important that you read through the entire question and you see which one you like best. Mm -hmm. um, more than likely, there's going to be one that suits you best. Um, yeah. Most people will like kind of focus mainly on things like rivers and rocks. Like if you're lucky enough to get a question with river and rocks, mm -hmm. like obviously take it. Um, but pick whichever one you think suits you best mm -hmm. um, when you're going in. Unbelievable. You can write a whole essay on rocks. You can write many essays on rocks, six Unbe essays in total. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I actually want to, because I, I kind of want to make sure we talk about this field study, because that's one yeah. of the main reasons that we are here. I think we could come back a different day and we, if, if, if you are agreeable with this, uh, and yeah, we, we could talk a little bit about, okay, maybe looking at certain essays and about what maybe even like what you feel is strongly or what you're recommending more to students yep. in this. But just briefly, when you're, we're talking about all these essays and you said students do learn stuff off, is it possible to prepare these ideas and then, and then formulate them towards the question on the, like on the day or kind of in general that you have the same sort of information overlapping in different essays? 
I suppose you're with regards to overlapping. I don't, yeah. I don't mean on the on the same question, but say I know these physical geography questions. Yeah. I have these. I have these. Can I these, use them somewhere else? With, with these no. These are the styles of questions that are coming up for physical geography. Do you yeah. kind of know what the essay question is almost going to be? Not that you'd have. I suppose you can predict the essay questions that mm -hmm. will come up. I would. There's kind of how would I say, like the bare necessities that yeah. you need for your physical. Yeah. Um, what you'll notice is every single year a question on rivers comes up. Now, mm. that will either be, and what it has been, I should say, is either a feature of erosion, a feature of deposition, really, that they have been the two main ones, okay? Mm. So one of them has appeared every single year. So I suppose, make sure you know that question off by heart, mm -hmm. and both of them off by heart. So, so what, I, what I mean is like, say if I, David Lewis is going into the yeah. thing, I know I need these SRPs. So I say, talk about, I, I have these, this list of SRPs on deposition. Now, I don't know what deposition actually is. Yeah. <laughs> but then the question is phrased in a certain way. I can use those SRPs because I know that they're definitely yeah. still to do with deposition, but, and then kind of, I suppose, pigeonhole the rest of the stuff around those yeah, SRPs. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. It's just very important that you answer the question they're asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you will get SRPs, say, if the question is on deposition, but if the question is on deposition and it's asking about a feature of fluvial deposition, mm -hmm. you the, on the market scheme, there'll only be a certain amount of marks yeah. allocated for discussing deposition in general. I get you, I get you. Um, okay, 100%. Well, maybe a different day we could come back and we could, we could have a look at that sort of stuff. But so far, what I've got from this is, well, there's loads I've never heard of here. Uh, but that even though the paper, it's complicated on first, on first uh, look at it, it actually is quite straightforward and a lot of options. So I actually, personally, if you were, as an, if I was an organized student, I would, I would like that. Yeah. I know what, I know what order that you're recommending that I go in it. I'm going for my, uh, I'm going for my option first, then I'm going for my short questions, then I'm going for my best essay one, and then my next best and my next best uh, in, in that. And I also know that there's, as I, you said, there are serious amount to choice, but I also know not to make the mistake of going for your part A's, your part A's, read all the different yeah. types of questions before I decide if I'm doing question one, two or three, say if it was for physical geography. Yeah. And you also gave us the timing of what we, we could do in it here. But we did say something at the very, very start here, and I, I actually don't know anything about this field study. I, I, I don't even know, it probably existed when I was in school, but I, 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 didn't, I didn't actually do, do geography in school. Um, and it was one of my big regrets. I picked chemistry at the time. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> um, I'm sure chemistry is fantastic, uh, but, I am, um, you know, you're I'm sure, always asking you're you. Sure you studied it. I'm always bloody asking you about rocks, you know, you know, all the time. But but there is a twenty percent field study. Yeah, but, there is. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a little bit about that if that's okay, because yeah, no I'm, I'm sure that's like that's kind of what's on people's minds yeah. at the moment. So the field study itself, uh, I, well, first of all, when does it have to be done by, and what is it? So the date is for this year. It's the end of April. Mm. Um, now. I'm not going to give the specific date because I actually haven't it off the top of my head. No, it's okay. Um, it's, right. it's just after Easter. Yeah. Um, so basically what happens with the field study is you go out, you carry out your field study from a list of, and I have it here in front of me, a list of titles, okay? Mm -hmm. So a list of geographical investigation topics that will change every single year. Yeah. Now, the most popular ones, again, is for people to go to a river or to go to the coastline, okay? And this year it's on transportation, it's focused on transportation and deposition, that title, okay? There is a number of other options, but they don't tend to be as popular. I would say probably above 90% of students do one of them, yep. okay? Um, so you go, you carry out your field investigation, as I said, this year transportation and deposition. Um, you carry out a number of experiments. You take as many notes as possible on the day, so about what you did. You collect your results, you make conclusions, and then you come back into school and you go to write out your booklet. Okay. Okay. Uh, fantastic. And so you, so you get graded on a booklet that you've written things into? Exactly, so you basically get graded, so 20% of your final exam, hmm. 100, 100 marks, is on that booklet, um, okay. which is amazing for students because you have it done before you go into the exam. You can take as much time or as little time as you want with it. Mm -hmm. It's a word count of 1,000 words, okay, mm -hmm. in total. Now, 
I do feel like there's probably a little bit of leeway because no examiner is actually going to go and count the 1,000 words, but try your best to keep it as close as possible to it. Yeah. Um, for example, if the word count, and you'll see here, I just have it on front of me in case I make any mistakes, like in your introduction, keep the word count in your planning, et cetera, et cetera, keep the word count, and they're all noted down on your booklet there. Yeah. Um, on the booklet. Oh, it tells you, you how much words that they want. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. So, what's the booklet actually broken into? You've got. So the booklet is broken into mainly here now, and I'm just just in case anybody's wondering what I'm having a look at. It's actually the marking scheme now. Can I first of all say, a lot of students don't realise that they have access to the marking scheme. The marking scheme is actually this is just a leave insert marking scheme. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is actually the 2019 one I have in front of me. The, leave the marking scheme is actually at the back of the marking scheme of the paper. Yep. You'll see here it's on page 41. It says geographical investigation. And this is the marking scheme that examiners have been working off. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of students don't seem to know that. Okay. And when they're writing up their booklet, they, they do need to know this um, because mm -hmm. they need to know what is worth the most marks. You'll find students will spend a lot of time on their introduction and planning, which is in total worth 10 marks. And they won't spend as much time on their gathering of information, their third section, which is worth 40. Or over here, what you'll see is your results, conclusion and evaluation, which is worth 30 um, marks in total. Mm -hmm. So it's important that students actually know that. There's also an additional 20 marks going for organisation and the pre presentation of your results. Okay. A lot of information for you there. No, no, no I got it. Okay, fantastic. So I'd suggest a lot of students go to what do I write for that? What do I do? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um. So, uh, so what, what would you say? Is, so I'm I'm actually taking up geography now, Tracy, and uh, I kind of go out. I got I got I actually have as many notes as possible written down, but I don't know how to take all that information that I have from my deposition of a coastline. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic into my introduction. So I assume the introduction is just where you went and that's where the crack is it? Actually it's not at all. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> what an idiot. Sorry. What an idiot. Okay. So, so to start off your introduction actually is the smallest section so it's generally only about 50 words. I think 50 words is actually the max word count. Mm -hmm. In your introduction what you will do you will state um, you will state basically your aims, your aims of your investigation. Now there really needs to be around four aims, okay? Yep. So some people will have five, but I would normally say there should be four aims. And what them aims are is what you want to achieve in this, in this investigation. So is it to measure the depth of the river? And if so, why? So is it to see if there, you know, is there, I suppose, material on the riverbed? Why do they need to know that? So what and why for yeah. each aim? Yeah, really, yeah. for each aim, yeah, you would be kind of saying what and why. Mm -hmm. um, but they should be very clear, they should be very, very clear, and everybody in your class mm -hmm. should have the same aim. So they kind of are outlined before you go out in your field investigation. Yeah, you yeah. should know what your aims are, yeah. but what your examiner is looking for there, they're looking for, um, they're looking for basically your list of aims. Um, you may have a sentence on the top to state what you're actually investigating what's your overall hypothesis mm -hmm. um, you can state that at the beginning as well for example to see that deposition has taken place on the river whatever river you're doing or whatever coastal you know coastline you're doing mm -hmm. okay um, normally just state that and then your four slash five aims okay fantastic fantastic yeah. and then the planning um, planning so it's section two generally 100 marks I think and again you can correct me if I'm wrong, but 100 marks off the top of my head mm -hmm. is the word count there. Your planning is what you do up to the point of going out to the river. Okay. So, for example, and this is just a couple of examples of, I suppose, sentences you can, you can use. Um, so, as a class, we chose the river, whatever river you want to do, mm -hmm. the river Dother, let's just say, um, due to its proximity with our school. Mm -hmm. um, we revised with the help of our teacher you know, coastal or river deposition mm -hmm. and transportation using the textbook and whatever textbook you use. Mm -hmm. Be very specific, give them the author's name, give them the page numbers that you used or the chapters that you used. Mm -hmm. If you did any sort of research yourself, so for example, you might research the weather prior to going out. So you might see the weather to look at the water levels in the river, or maybe it's the wind levels along the coast. Mm -hmm. 
state the website that you used mm -hmm. and give the reason why. So don't just say, I looked up met.ie or metairn.ie and leave it full stop. Mm -hmm. Say why, tell your examiner why you actually looked up that particular website. Yeah. Um, it's very important to do that. Why would you, is it this probably, why would you look up a particular one over another? Um, I suppose whether, generally weather is a good one for rivers anyways to use. Yeah. Um, for example, last year with oh, my Oh, sorry, I guess you're quite, I, I'm an idiot again. I was thinking oh. about what, why you looked up, why, what, what was it? Website. Why you looked at the weather because the weather would affect the height of the river. And yeah. So, <laughs> I'm embar embarrassing myself. You were the same as well. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. And Dylan wants to be a geography teacher over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one day, one day everyone will get to see who Dylan is, you know. <laughs> okay, no, fantastic. Okay, so why, so book and weather and then, and then why, you, why it would affect yeah. you. Yeah, fantastic. Um, other things you can mention is the fact that you, I suppose, beforehand, you, you know, you met your teacher in the morning, you met, you were split up into your groups, you chose a team leader, um, you might divide out the tasks and discuss the tasks that you have to do during the day and then maybe that you were briefed on health and safety and the environmental impact of your study um, and I suppose I'm just kind of popping out buzzwords here that you could use. Um, another one could be for the fact that you had the you looked at the equipment and with the help of your teacher that you kind of practiced using it and you kind of spoke about it. Mm -hmm. They would be kind of a couple of ideas that you could use and again make sure you put your own swing on it. Um, depending on the topic that you are choosing. Mm -hmm. um, after that, it's gathering of information, section number three. The, the poorly answered one. The, yeah, probably between this three and four is probably yeah. this, the two sections that students find extremely difficult, okay. um, in my opinion. Um, section three is actually your gathering of data. It's worth, it's worth 40 marks, apologies. It's a very simple section. All you have to do is look at generally the two tasks that you have done, so what you've actually carried out. Um, and under your tasks, you'll have a couple of things. Maybe, maybe it's measuring the width and the depth of the river, um, the cross-sectional area, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, you state what, what the topic is. You give a justification now. Some people say give a good justification. Some people say don't. I generally would say just pop it in, it looks really good and your examiners do like to see why you're doing a certain thing. Mm -hmm. You can list your equipment, although marks are not allocated because you put your equipment on your diagrams. Yep. Um, and then what you do is you just explain the tasks that you did, the, what you did. So you may, as I said, be measuring the depth of the river. So you might be saying, I measured the average depth of the river. So student A, into the river with the meter stick. Mm -hmm. Student B and C, they pull the measuring tape across the river from side A to side B and you'd have quite a lot labelled on your diagram. Mm -hmm. um, after that, you could say that student C, cause I don't know what student I'm on now at the moment, C or D, whichever I'm on, Students, yeah, yeah. pointed out, kind of maybe you were measuring every, you know, you'd, you'd measure the width and you divide it by 10. So pointed out where the student needs to measure, so whatever it is on yours, and just explain exactly how you did it, because you find people are very, very vague. They're just saying, you know, I recorded the results, or I measured the width of the river, or I measured the depth, and that's all they say. It's yeah. how you did it, okay. rather than the actual, fact. the actual fact of you doing it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Explain that you placed you know, the meter stick for, or vertically into the water until it reached the riverbed. You placed it on its side to avoid it bending. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just having all the little details of what you did, you're explaining the process mm -hmm. of you gathering the information yeah. there. Fantastic. That's probably, I'm just guessing off the top of my head, is when you're writing this down, it's probably yeah. easiest to, well, this is what I personally am just thinking, if I was to write down, even if it sounded silly, as much stuff as possible and pair it back versus the other way. Exactly, yeah. And I got one right. You did? Yes. Um, yeah, just write everything down, write every little detail of how you gathered that information. Um, remember the section is called gathering of data. Yeah. It's how you gathered it. Um, you need to explain that to your examiner and be as detailed as possible. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as you said, write as much down as possible. Literally, if you can at all, write it down the same day as you did the field investigation. 
because that's when it's fresh in your mind. Um, you might even have one of your teammates actually writing down exactly what you did, say sitting on the bank of the river or you know, sitting on the beach, wherever you are. Mm. But write it down as soon as possible because it's fresh in your head then, mm -hmm. um, all the little details. Yeah, fantastic. So as, as much as possible, yeah. Dylan went out into the river. Dylan had the flu. <laughs> Dylan came back for it, but Dylan started crying. But it, but it, but it's actually just, but it's everything to do with geography. But just in terms of that, yeah. the actual question is, you wouldn't say Dylan. You'd say student A, B, and C, like you're saying. Um, you'd find some people will actually use yeah. first names. Personally, I would say use student A, B, and C. Yeah. Um, they're not supposed to know the names of the students. So you're mm. as you know yourself, you're not supposed to put your own name in an exam or anything yeah, like yeah. that. So I would say you say student one or classmate one or my classmate or my teammate or perfect i would personally say avoid using first names perfect and then so that that's gathering that's it that's gathering that's yeah. good and then the results and conclusion that's the last one isn't it? results and conclusion results conclusion and evaluation i suppose yeah. is popped in there that's worth 30 marks in total um yeah. now this is definitely a section that students really really struggle with um mm. why do they struggle with it because it has to be very much, in a lot of cases, particularly for the conclusion and evaluation, it's their, it's what they think um, and it's what they would change. So the results, the results are quite simple. A lot of your results will be shown in graphs or diagrams on the spaces on, I suppose, the left, the left hand side. Um, for your results, I would always say split it up into results and conclusion for each of your, you know, your tasks that you completed give the results, show the calculations, show your examiner exactly how you got them calculations now. If it's, you know, if it turns out that it's really, really long or if it's shown on the diagram, then no need. Mm -hmm. But give them the results, give them the averages, the means, the modal, maybe rock type that was found or the median, whatever it is, give them the results. Then have a second heading for each saying conclusion. Your conclusion is why you got them results. Mm -hmm. So, you know, why was the rock maybe why were the rocks or the load found on the bed of the river quite small is that because there is a high level of erosion if so what erosion do you think occurred there is it abrasion is it attrition is it solution hydraulic action and you should be able to link that up with i suppose your with what you thought was going to happen um your hypothesis really you mm -hmm. know if there's a lot of erosion occurring. Back in part one. That's back in part one, yeah. yeah. If there was a lot of erosion occurring, what type is it? Give the definitions of the type of erosion you're saying is happening. Mm -hmm. um, then kind of say to yourself, is this, because a lot of the time, and I think this is the funny thing, students will come back and they'll be like, but that's not what should have happened there. Like, mm -hmm. this is the old age stage of the river and, you know, erosion shouldn't happen in the old age stage, which mm -hmm. is what are textbooks will generally tell us mm. if that is the case state what happened and then say say to your examiner and write it down that this is not the results we had expected mm -hmm. as it is the old stage of the river we thought or i thought deposition would have taken place and explain that explain what is different than what you thought and is there a reason why that's pro and that's probably good that probably separates you a little bit and the yeah. examiner is like wow they're actually really thinking about this versus regurgitating exactly, yeah. just whatever and you can do a little bit of research, I suppose. Um, you know, if the water was a darker color than you thought, why was it? Is it that it's on a peaty soil? You kind of have to do a little bit of individual research mm -hmm. in this section. Um, so do your results, do your conclusion for each. So each task that you completed mm -hmm. um, individually. And then I would always say to students, put your, because it is called results, conclusion and evaluation, put your evaluation in at the end. Mm -hmm. um, I would personally, and then again, this is a preference, I would personally say put your limitations into this section. Now, you're probably thinking, what limitations would we have? Limitations would be, for example, if you were collecting the bed load size from the riverbed. So a student gets in, they put their hands in the riverbed and they go to take the rock out. The rock is much bigger than they thought. They can't take it out. So they have to... Limitation, weak student. No, not strong. What do they you mean? So, sorry, but oh no, oh, this is happening to me again. Sorry, sorry. It's like, we can't say that. 
Yeah, oh, no, you can't. Oh, you meant this in the weak suit. You can't talk about it. No, you can. You could do it. No, no. So I limit. I just meant in strength. Oh, strength. Every, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it, like rivers, you know, every student is unique and everyone yeah. is beautiful in their own way. Exactly. Okay. Sorry, so the limitations, so you're trying to take the rock, you can't take yeah, the rock out. So. You can't take the rock out, so obviously they'd have to choose another rock now. Mm -hmm. That causes bias mm. um, in your results. So state all them little things and say how you need to make sure, and this is what the evaluation part is really focusing on, is, you know, think forward. If you had to repeat this task, how would you change it? So how, how would you get over that challenge or that limitation? Mm -hmm. um, another one would be, for example, a lot of the time when you measure the depth of the river with the meter stick, the bottom of the meter stick is flat and it gets caught in between rocks and so you can't get it mm -hmm. to the bed of the river. So, for example, and obviously not many schools have these, but if you were to repeat this experiment, you might use some sort of laser equipment mm -hmm. to actually measure the depth more accurately. Mm -hmm. um, there's loads of little things. and So basically you're, you're evaluating your entire exactly. experiment here and you're kind of saying... Well, if possible, I could have made this better because of this. Yeah. But you're, but you, but you're not really saying, oh, my experience is unreal because I <laughs> no, use the no. best meter stick. Because and... you're going to miss out on marks if you tell them it's yeah. unreal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the evaluation is basically just, how could I have made this better? Or exactly. how could this be better in, kind of, if you had everything available to us in the world? Exactly. What went wrong and how could I improve on it next time? Yeah. Um, try to get, I would say, three, if not four, in there. Um, three of not four limitations in there and with them your kind of evaluation now I would always say as well at the end state did you meet your hypothesis hypothesis yes or no mm -hmm. um, and if yes or if no whichever it is state why so why why was it why did it not match up with what you thought mm -hmm. was going to happen on that river and I suppose examiners want to see your individual work the person who's correcting this wants wants to see your individual work your thoughts particularly for section number four mm -hmm. okay it it shouldn't be the exact same because you should be doing your own research you should have mm. picked up little things on the day that maybe other classmates may not have picked up picked up on mm -hmm. um but it's very important to state whether or not you actually met your hypothesis was it correct or was it not mm -hmm. don't be afraid to say it wasn't mm -hmm. um and state why. Okay. Okay, so kind of sections one to three is really, really a group sort of idea. Yeah. And section four is is yourself taking the all the stuff yeah. you did as a group and just individualizing, as you said, your, yeah. your idea here, breaking it into your results conclusion for each task and then your, your personal evaluation with your limitations of it. Yeah. And then did you did you meet your hypothesis that was back in part one that it should have been there there before and why or why not? Exactly. And I would say when you're doing your results, sit down with your teammates. They should have the same results as you. Mm -hmm. um, make sure all your calculations are correct. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time students are afraid to kind of double check their calculations. Mm -hmm. um, check everybody in your team should have the same results, the identical results. Yeah. Um, you might lay them out a little bit differently, but they should be identical. Okay. Um, Fantastic. Fantastic. So that, that's unbelievable. You, do you have a... About Four more minutes? I do, four more minutes. Um, also, just to mention on that, there is just... Is this, last is the, is, sorry, is this point coming out of my four minutes or the, this is extra? This can be okay, extra okay, if okay, you okay. want. Grand, yeah, no problem. <laughs> um, just to point out, there is 20 marks in on your field study yeah. out of the 100 marks going for your organisation and presentation of results. Um, okay. That's just very small little things. That's just making sure, for example, on your graphs, so if you draw something like a bar chart, there's two marks going for the title Mm -hmm. on your bar chart um there's one one axis with units or scale there's you know every axis on it is mm -hmm. worth two marks just have a glance down through it's actually i have it in front of me here page 44 of a marking scheme it should be around the same page mm -hmm. they want to see generally i would say two different methods that's actually what's stated not generally two different methods of presentation so don't be afraid to give them a third, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know. Um, there's no harm and sometimes it's easier to present your results as a graph, as you know yourself, than actually write down every piece of information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's your formula. Yeah, okay, no, <laughs> fantastic. Thanks so much, Trace. That's that's absolutely unbelievable in terms of the amount of information there. Every, well, not every time. But a lot of times when the teachers come on here and they discuss their subject, it makes me feel bad about what I know about my subject. So <laughs> fair play to you, unbelievable. Um, 
you know, I just kind of get by day to day with my stuff here. Oh, is that going up in the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a couple of marks for that. <laughs> but anyway, we've got a few questions from, um, from uh, some, of our, some of our Instagram followers here. Uh, and are you okay to oh, yeah. answer a few of these? Fair okay, enough. so, well, first one is from, uh, from Reese. Good, good friend of mine. I think you've actually already answered this, but just to, just to fully clarify here, it says, how long should you be spending on the 80 mark essay? Now, I think, I actually think that I can answer this. Okay, go for now, it. Now, if I'm wrong, you can say it here. So the 80 mark essay, he's talking about the thing we're going to do first on the exam, uh, what we suggest to do yeah. first. What's and, it called? And it's the, uh, it's the option. Yeah, good And enough. then in the option, we actually do geoecology in this we school, do, but yeah. you, people do other stuff. So in geoecology, it's 80 marks for this one essay. There's no A, B, and C. Well, Reese, I recommend that you actually spend 35 minutes on that, on that essay. Would that be correct? Nailed it. Yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable. Okay, and, and we've actually, you, you, well, in fairness, you laid out the timing and all that yep. sort of stuff before, and we said it's very, very, very important. You know that timing, and very important that you stick to that timing. Okay, perfect. Then it says, <laughs> question from Brian. Brian, any timing tips? Oh, uh, we know it. We know the timing tips, so, so I don't need to call yeah. that out again. Perfect. That, that's fantastic. Uh, but the, here's a good one from our, our good old pal, Leaving Cert 2021. How are you getting on? Uh, he or she said, how long should an essay be? Now, I know you, we touched on that, but I think it's important that you say that again. I know it's, you said not length, but it's SRPs. But. It's not length at all. I have seen people get 30 marks with less than an A4 page. It may take another student two A4 pages to get their 30 marks. The main thing when you are writing your essays, every essay is worth 30 marks, which is 15 significant relevant points. Mm -hmm. Know the marking scheme. For example, if you are doing a subcontinental region and you say India, does that get you two marks for that one word? Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking at culture and aspects of culture for saying like language and religion, well, there's four marks mm -hmm. out of the 30, that's two SRPs gone. It really is up to the individual person. Um, you can get, approximately, as I said, eight to 10 marks very quickly with a couple of words, um, which usually means about 10, 11 SRPs after that. Essays, you won't, with 15 minutes, you won't have any longer than a, a page and a half. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not about the length. It's about your facts that you have in it. Don't waffle. Don't give me these big, long, waffly sentences. As an examiner, I don't want to read them. Mm -hmm. I want everything straight to the point. I don't want repetition. Mm -hmm. throughout the essay so oftentimes again when people don't plan their essays very well and you can know a student who has gone in and has just put pen to paper and started writing from the start and you know finished on page number two or three or whatever it is you need to plan so you don't repeat points mm -hmm. you'll often find it's the same point is said like as I said earlier on limestone is a permanent baroque oftentimes you'll see that it's like one two three four five times it's said in an essay you can yeah. only get marks for it once for once okay normally a page and a bit but again, it depends on your handwriting. It depends on, you know, how straight to the point you are. Are you doing a bit of waffle? Mm -hmm. um, avoid waffle, avoid repetition. 15 SRPs, that's what you need. Fantastic. Um, um, one, one more question, this is actually from me, and it's, yeah. it's not a, mocks are in a couple of weeks, yeah. uh, depending on what school, maybe next week. Yeah. If I haven't studied that much, I've, I've yeah. gone to school for a year and a half, but I haven't really studied, I assume, you should, you're saying to your students, use a mock as a test for timing and your planning and stuff, yeah. and you're going to make mistakes, fair enough. But in terms of overall uh, uh, topics, like, so not in, in terms of a prediction or anything, but yeah. like, say, for example, for biology, I, I assess each of like, if a student asks me and I say, well, first you've got to study unit one in the experiments, that's what I'd say, and then you can pick topics after that. Yeah. And we, we pick topics depending on what the student's done in school and what they've done with me, etc. Is there, if I was going in and I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed, what would yep. be the first thing that I should start studying? What should be the first thing I open, just for the mocks? Just now. for the mocks. Um, I suppose, well, personally what I would say is go with the bare necessities that are the same as for the Leaving Cert. Now, mm. if you look at physical geography, like if you aim to get one good essay question in each of your sections. Okay. So physical geography, rivers come up every year. Mm -hmm. Feature of erosion, deposition, human interaction. So mm -hmm. I would focus on them three. Now, if, you're, if you had them learned, and you wanted to go for a second, go for your rocks. Your three categories of rocks, and again, your human interaction. You'll notice nearly every year human interaction with either rivers or rocks come up. Mm -hmm. That would be your bare necessities for a physical. In regional, well, think about it. If you do your subcontinental, we do India here. A lot of students do Brazil. If you did your subcontinental very, very well, 
um, which is just one region. And just for your information, there's nothing your examiner can ask you to compare it against. Mm -hmm. So when if you were doing Ireland really well, they can ask you to compare the Western region and the Dublin region or mm -hmm. the BMW and GDA, whichever you do. And with your Mercedes, Paris, <laughs> sorry, no, okay, I get the it. Paris Basin or the Mezzogiorno. So if you do the subcontinental, that one section, learn it off by heart. It's always asked on its own. Okay, so it's yeah. never asked compare and so contrast. We, so yeah, so it's a, a bit of a hack. Yeah, it. it's so rivers yeah. slash rocks, subcontinental for your India or Brazil, whichever you do. If you go on, I suppose, with the economic and human, it's a little bit more difficult. There's smaller sections. If you're going with the human, I would probably say focus on either overpopulation or migration. So mm -hmm. one or the other. Um, pick one for your mock. Try to get just the thin types of questions off by heart. For your geoecology, I would say just focus on biomes. Um, it's met, geoecology is made up of biomes and soil. Just focus on your biomes. Pick one or two essays. Pick the two main essays, really. Your characteristics and your human interaction with biomes. Mm -hmm. um, pick them two and learn them two and learn the rest after your mocks, like go back. Mm. You're still, it's the same information, just kind of tweaking it a little bit. Brilliant, fantastic. Do you enjoy being on the podcast? Yeah. I yeah, well, thanks so much. Hopefully we, we get you back in again if if you get a minute uh, close to the leading certain we, yeah. we can go into a little bit more depth and how we have this. And uh, I, I know that, well, I'm not doing geography, but I would have taken a serious amount of value from the way you've, you've pulled this apart and the way you've organized it for us. And, um, and then obviously, and then the field study as well, because I just, from working the school the last number of years, just know that students are, are slightly panicking about this field study, which is actually a, it's actually a bonus if you think about it, that you oh, get yeah. to do it. Uh, but having the, the, it pulled apart like that, and you, you've literally told us what to write in these sections. So thanks, thanks very much, Tracy. No problem at all. Um, okay, cool. So uh, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for your questions. And uh, any further suggestions or anything, just let us know via Instagram or in the comments below. Uh, but Tracy, hopefully see you again soon. Cool. All right. Cheers.